Hello YouTube, Ace here, and today we're having a look at a game called Abrams Tank. Now this came out in October of 2016, and what is it exactly, I hear you ask? Well, it's actually a fan reimagining of sorts of a game that came out in April of 1991, called Hover Tank 3D. And this is very close in a lot of ways to how the actual game was, although there are some pretty glaring differences I feel I should point out, and I will later on. Unfortunately, first I need to clear the elephant out of the room first. Uh, this game has received some backlash for the state that it is in. There's a lot of issues with it, I should mention, but we'll get to those soon enough. And to start off, though, the developer has, well, he has not taken kindly to the backlash, we'll say. He's called people I have reviewed his game, well, well, he's insulted them, called them dum-dums, no, that they don't know how to uh, play retro games or don't even know what they're about, and that sort of thing. And when it comes down to it, this game really is abysmal, and it really needs to be called out as such. But when you... But unfortunately, if there's one rule I f say you should always follow if you're a game developer, under no circumstances should you uh, go out of your way to insult people that are just simply critiquing your game, especially if they're fair critiques, like the ones that the guy has been calling out. And he's even gone so far as to put at his insults and whatnot on the product description. Yeah, you could not make this up. He, he really did do that. But... As I've said, under, if there's one rule that you should follow in general, it's don't treat criticism of your game badly, which this guy did. If anything, you could argue that in some ways criticism in its own right could be a blessing in disguise if you're trying to improve the product of, or the quality of your games. Part of the whole, if there's a proverb that I'm quite fond of, it's that there is a single lesson learned in victory, but a thousand learned in defeat. If you learn from your mistakes, you can improve upon what you've uh, built already, and actually make something that's more worth people's time. In my case, this would be the fact that I've taken criticism myself to heart, and have improved the quality of my videos to an extent, used better recording equipment to record my voice better, so people, because people did not like static on the microphone that I was using, so I'm using a better microphone now. And that's a good example of it in practice. So, moving on from that, let's talk about the actual game. Now, when it comes to games that are simply yeah, inspired by an earlier time period, such as the 8-bit era, or games that are actual reboots or remasters or what have you, when it comes to those games, if there's one rule I have with those, it should be this. Ask yourself first before you make the game, what does the product that you envision have that hasn't been done elsewhere and better? In the case of this game, what exactly is better in this game than the original hover tank? And that's a question that's very interesting when you look at it because the answer is that in reality a lot of the things that are in this game are actively worse than in the original Hover Tank 3D. There's a few areas I'm going to cover, and I'm going to try to just go into specific categories. So, starting off with category one, sound effects. And while I don't like to typically talk about sound effects too much, I will have to say this, because the games are just so far apart in age. The sound effects in uh, Abrams Tank are actually worse than the sound effects in Hover Tank 3D. And to prove my point, I am going to show just how different they are. So let's have a listen.
hopefully it should be quite clear now that the original Hover Tank 3D game, which came out in 1991, has better sound effects than the Abrams Tank reimagined. However, that's not the only major issue with this game. Another thing to consider is the graphics. Now, while the Abrams Tank game, as you see here, is being played in full screen mode, it is actually quite difficult to get it to run in full screen mode, because normally it actually starts up in an 800 by 600 resolution windowed mode. How do you get it to go full screen? Do you go, uh, do you hold alt and enter like a lot of games? No, you actually have to go into the config files to actually get it to work in true full screen mode. And even then, as you can see, there's plenty of black bars. So that is a bit of an issue with the graphics. Now, you could argue that the, uh, the 3D or the 2D sprites are a little bit, in some regard, better textured on Abrams Tank than on 3D Hover Tank. There are other issues. One thing I need to note is the fact that they actually messed up the shadow textures on the walls. Now, with the original Hover Tank 3D, the walls were sh still had shadow effects of sorts, so the coloration would actually ha be darker in some respects on certain areas of the wall where it's supposed to have a shadow effect. That's fine. What doesn't work is when you make a wall pitch black in terms of its shadows, which does happen sometimes in Abrams Tank. Now what this does with this very basic level design, it might actually cause the player to think that that's not actually a wall. And this here is exactly what I'm talking about. So in terms of graphics, while you could argue that the sprites are slightly superior on uh, Abrams Tank, I would say that the graphics on 3D Hover Tank are better as well. So moving on from graphics, let's talk about the documentation of both Hover Tank 3D and Abrams Tank, and specifically what sort of help documents you can expect to find. Well, both of them have a help page by pressing the F1 key. The problem with Abrams Tank in this regard is that it doesn't actually have a manual. Now, even if you looked at the shareware version of Hover Tank 3D, you will actually find a manual. I know because the a shareware version is available online and it has a manual on it that you can print off. So all the important information such as the controls will be available to you in this regard. And speaking of which, you can't actually, uh, there's no improvements in terms of the interface either. So uh, with regards to the controls, you can't remap the controls um, and that is another huge issue. Now, with regards to documentation, well, the reason why this is important is because these game, the original Hover Tank 3D came out in 1991, and PC games during the 80s and early 90s, documentation was often outright essential in terms of manuals, because you often needed the manual to know how to play the game from the get-go, as many games did not have a tutorial system of any sort whatsoever. In fact, some companies even went out of their way to make the manuals part of the DRM system of their game, putting in certain little bits of information that were necessary to allow the game to actually progress. Another issue with documentation with Abrams Tank in particular is that it came out in 2016, at a time where people were more used to these sort of things like tutorials and being able to change your options inside the game itself. So not having a manual that explains that you have to go into the config files to change video settings or uh, volume settings or, for instance, how to play the game is a major issue. Now that we've talked about the documentation, let's move on to the level design. And while it is true that uh, Abrams Tank does have some levels that are basically rip-offs of Hover Tank 3D, this is not always the case. However, whenever I've seen the levels that are different in Hover Tank 3D as opposed to Abrams Tank, I have to say that Hover Tank 3D has better comparable missions when they are different. For example, the very first mission, it is very easy to die to the very first enemy because you don't necessarily know what the controls are because you don't actually have a manual. And it, that's a, like I said, that's an issue. But once you get past that, it actually becomes, of course, easy. Unfortunately, there's some stuff that's there that you're not going to see later on, such as uh, shield regenerators that regenerate your health to a point. You're not going to see those as pickups for quite some time. 
with the case of Hover Tank 3D, you spawn in and yeah, you might have an enemy that's close to you, but hopefully you should have had the manual and you know what the controls are. And secondly, the levels are a lot, the difficulty curve is much more gradual and also the level designs appear to be better done overall. Of course, part of this goes down to the fact that the walls in Hover Tank 3D aren't textured black and it's therefore very easy to tell the difference between what's a path and what's a wall. So there is that. And with the level design out of the way, it's time to talk about the writing. And, well, it's actually a bit of a curiosity because, to be fair, the writing in the original Hover Tank 3D wasn't all that complex either. However, to the game's credit, it did have a genuine dark sense of humor. So you play as a strict mercenary for hire for an organization of do-gooders who basically have to rescue people from bad situations because this is a dystopian nightmarish future society where everyone is extremely nuke happy and the game goes out of its way to make everyone else seem comically evil while the organization that you work for is comically heroic and allow me to read off part of the description to one of the levels a group of terrorists, known as the Dark Legion, are holding a bunch of children hostage until their demands are met. The government has decided, with their usual compassion, to nuke the Legion along with their hostages. Get the hostages out of there. So hopefully you can see the sort of sense of humor that the game is going for. Now let's compare it, if we will, to one of the missions from Abrams Tank. Hashtag Black Lives Matter protesters barricaded themselves inside an army base after killing the guards and equipping themselves with assault rifles. The mutants released to deal with them aren't letting us through. Get inside, deal with the mutants, and get the rifles. The rifles are the priority. The protesters aren't. Now, while I could complain a good deal about the writing being racist, the fact of the matter is that doing so would well, it seems quite too obvious to actually make that the main criticism that I have here. Fortunately, the game gives me all kinds of other opportunities to work with. So, in the case of this particular mission, let's get started. For a start, despite the fact that you're talking about Black Lives protesters specifically as being the people that have to be rescued or the gut that you have the people that you have to rescue the guns from, they didn't even bother to retexture the hostages to take into consideration the description of the mission. So the the hilarious reality is that the developer of this game was so lazy that they couldn't even do racism right. Which is a criticism I cannot believe I'm actually making, but here we are. Second, apparently if you even if you if you decide to have some accidents. So, oh, sorry, let's try that again accidents uh, with regards to the protesters apparently the mission will actively punish you and I guess you get a you didn't do good on the mission which makes no sense because how was the rif how are the rifles ruined if the protesters should meet an unfortunate time in I ask which again makes no sense because of the level design and the level description thirdly the group that you're with has tanks how can they be short on rifles to the degree that they have to pick them up from protesters if they have tanks? And see, that's what it all really boils down to. The writing just doesn't make sense with regards to this. So to finish, when I asked earlier what exactly does this game provide that the original Hover Tank 3D didn't, the answer is not really a whole lot. In fact, in almost every regard, Hover Tank 3D is a superior product. And just let that thought sink in. The original game that came out in 1991 is superior a product to what the person that's supposedly a fan of it was able to pull off in their little homage game in 2016. When this game came out, when Abrams Tank came out in October of 2016, Hover Tank 3D was already 25 years old. There really is no excuse for this. And the simple fact of the matter is, they should have 
They could have done anything with this. They could have taken the original idea and built upon it, maybe do something different. Look at a game like, say, look at how Activision took the original Battlezone idea and in 1998 did a reimagining of that uh, by adding in all kinds of plot points, adding in all kinds of story and character to it. Battlezone 98, for example, was a classic and a certain, a great example of a hidden gem. This, if anything, does, is a disservice to the original Hover Tank 3D. I mean, if I hadn't have played Hover Tank 3D uh, and just looked at this, my thought wouldn't be, wow, I wonder how good Hover Tank 3D is. I would, my thought would be, wow, if the remake, if the fan-made remake was this bad, I can't imagine how bad the original is. I mean, you just can't get too much more disrespectful to the original game than to do this. So that's my ultimate thoughts on uh, Abrams Tank and why it's not a good game. Hopefully, uh, this might find, hopefully some of you might find this interesting. Um, maybe we can have a bit of a discussion on what make what makes a good retro game good and what makes a bad retro game bad. But until then, hope to see you guys again soon. Take care. Ace out.